Hello. Welcome to Bottles and Books, aka Drink and Read, aka Tyrion and Samwell. As you may have guessed, that is a dog. Maybe my dog will stop eating tables. Hey. Hey. Oresh. Today's bottle, which my dog is eating the box of, is rather obscure, and I'm really excited about it. It is a uh, Kilhoman Sautern cask finish, and I will take my dog's meal away from him for a second, because I want to prove to you that I have not even opened it yet, haven't tried it yet. So, the magic of editing, let's speed through this. So here we go, the Kilhaman Sautern Cask Finish 2018 Edition. This edition is a little bit different from previous years in that it has spent less time in the Sautern Cask, from what I hear, to balance out the flavors a little bit more. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. First, let's take a look at the label and the bottle. My dog is really going nuts with that box. You may be wondering why I chose such an obscure bottle for the very first episode of Bottles and Books. And the main reasons are threefold. First of all, timing. This is a limited release. I believe there are about 10,000 bottles total and not very many uh, casks of it made, so it's something I wanted to get my hands on as soon as I heard they were putting it out. Um, I learned about Kilhaman not too long ago. That's a story for another episode, but so far I've really liked what they've had to put out, so I've been really excited about this release. Second reason is I have not tried this one yet. There's going to be some bottles that I have lined up that I'm going to be reviewing that I've already tried and I love and I want to share them with you guys and my thoughts on them. And the third is that this bottle, since it is kind of obscure and limited, there are not a lot of reviews on this. I've already tried, I tried to look up to see if there were any reviews about this prior to getting it. There were, I think two and both of them I think were previous, I think they were the 2016 edition. One was in German and the other one was a video that was about an hour and a half long. So I'm gonna to try to cut it a little bit short of that to keep your guys' attention span, because if you're anything like me, you're the kind of person that plugs their microphone into the headphone jack on their camera. Yeah, now. Now, if you're anything like me, you might be asking yourself, what the f is Sautern? As it turns out, or as it sow turns out, rather. It's a wine. More specifically, from the Bordeaux region in France. As you can see, it's a white wine wherein the grapes have basically gone moldy, almost turned into raisins on the vine. Speaking layman talk, because I'm a layman when it comes to wine. But this actually interested me a lot. There's a rich history behind it. The fungus that grows on the grapes is something called boritidis, or known as noble rot, and it was actually a highly sought after wine in France, um, even hundreds of years ago. It is still an expensive wine. This bottle, 350 milliliters, runs at about uh, $50. It's been chilled. I've been letting it breathe for a little while. So we're going to see how it is. I'm excited, although I'm a slightly bit concerned. I don't know if you smell the cork on white wines, but it smells weird. You know, 
I'll give you the label. Oh wow, that's actually really nice. On the nose, I really, I, I mean, it's stupid to say from a wine, but you get grapes. You get nice, um, sour, tangy, green grapes. A little bit of a peach, almost. That's nice. That's nice. So, it is a little bit thicker in consistency. You can feel it on your tongue. It's really pleasant. Definitely getting a little bit of a honey taste. Excuse me. The thing that really intrigued me about this wine is this is a wine that you, if properly stored, can keep for up to around 100 years. I mean, not that many of us are probably going to be living 100 years from the moment that we buy this, but this is a wine that can be stored for such a long time. Maybe that'd be a cool thing to leave grandchildren or something like that. Without further ado, let's jump back into the future and see how that is. So now that we filled you in on what a sow turn is, let's just read the back of the label, shall we? You want to read too? The Sautern cast finish is a vatting of 30 2012 bourbon barrels, so there's only 30 barrels, married in Sautern wine casks for five months prior to bottling. So this one they only put in the Sautern wine cask for five months, whereas prior to this bottling, I believe it was for significantly longer. <coughs> the, excuse me, don't inhale your saliva. <coughs> the five month finishing allowing for the sweet white grape influence of the Sautern cask to balance with the characteristic mixed fruit and peat smoke of Kilman. Signed Anthony Willis, founder of Dogs Barking. So as I mentioned in the tasting of the Sautern, that white grape influence is strong, it is noticeable, it is there in the best way possible. I love it. It's grown on me a lot since trying that. Uh, it was a couple days ago now. Uh, my wife, who doesn't really even drink at all, she loved it. So for those of you that don't know Kilhaman, it is an Isla whiskey. Therefore, it is peated, strong. It is there and it will kick you in the face. And I love that about Isla whiskeys. So I'm really excited to see what a dessert wine brings to such a fierce whiskey. I really like their corks, by the way. Nice and wood. Nazdaravia. You get that peat smoke and subtly behind it is that gentle nudge of white grape. That is... <laughs> That's amazing. That's one of the most complex things I've ever tasted. Soon as it hits your tongue, you get that sweetness from the Sauterne. And almost immediately afterward, it is flushed by fire and smoke and fire again. This actually, let me... The, give you the alcohol content of this. This is a 50%, so it's a beast. It's there. Wow. When I say that, <laughs> when I say that's complex, that is there. You get the citrus. You get the smoke, but not that harsh, dry smoke that you sometimes get. With Isla, it's almost as if it were vaporized and moist. There's that grape again, but it is jacked up on Isla Pete, and it is wonderful. It's a wonderful life, Charlie Brown. The, well, 
when you exhale, you get a symphony. Let's read what it says on the back here. The nose, you get maritime peat smoke, citrus and tropical fruits with hints of buttery sweetness. The palate, soft creamy chocolate and licorice with waves of peat smoke, cinnamon and mixed fruit. The finish, layered peat smoke and fruit with long lasting honeyness. I added my own words there. With lasting honey sweetness. It's really similar to the color of the Sauterne, if you remember. Another thing I like about Kilhoman is they don't, they don't dye, there's no coloring added. It's, what you see is what they make. What is it, buddy? That's good stuff. Okay, so now that we've drank, let's get to reading. This book is the first book I've chosen uh, for the show. It is about as obscure as this bottle. It is by one of my favorite authors, a fellow Slav, Stanislav Lem. He is a Pole, and this book is called The Siberiad. It is actually a collection of short stories about the same two inventors. Uh, Truel and Clopatius. They are basically the equivalent of two Ricks from Rick and Morty. And instead of being these evil maniacs who are equally as genius, they're more just scoundrels. Genius scoundrels who try to outdo each other. They have misadventures and shenanigans all over their planet and other planets. They run into PhD pirates who demand knowledge rather than gold. There are stars that are rearranged to create advertisements. It's just a really hilarious book. The writing style is fantastic. I just really love this book. It's nice because this book is short stories. There are 15 short stories, so you can pick it up and put it down whenever you want. It is ideal for traveling, for if you're in between books and you just want to read something quick, but you know that you have another book to get to, you know, just pick up a short story, you're done with it within 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, I really love this book. It's hilarious, um, and I have nothing bad to say about it. Sunny Swaplem is a pioneer in sci-fi fiction. He wrote this book in about 1965. Um, a lot of robots, which Slavs have a lot to do with. Uh, Karol Čapek was the one who coined the term robot. He is a Czech, so Slavs for the sci-fi win. Definitely pick this book up if you are a sci-fi fan. If you want to please your uh, fellow Polish nerds, definitely mention this, mention Stanisław Lem, their eyes will widen up, uh, and you'll make some friends. I really, really can't recommend this enough, so please get this book if you are looking for a good sci-fi read. Get this bottle if you want to try something interesting. It is super complex. I like it a lot. There's nothing bad about it that that would make me not want to drink it. It is great. I, uh, and it's such a whiskey that I feel like it could go with a lot of different things. I mean, even fish, uh, obviously steaks, that sort of thing, cheeses. It's, it's delicious. I, I really enjoy it. So episode one, bottles and books, drink and read. Tyrion Samwell, Nazdaravia. It's from the Bordeaux region in France. Down. Ha <laughs> ha